Jeff. Um, it feels like since we've talked about it with pretty much everyone in our daily lives, it was a surprise to find that the three of us have not discussed that infamous Goldman Sachs slide deck, which came out last Thursday, revealing that uh, among 13 junior analysts that were polled, we saw an average of 105 hours working per week. 100% of the respondents to the survey said they have been faced with unrealistic expectations and their quality of lives, uh, quality of life falling from right around nine out of 10 before taking their job at Goldman closer to two underneath three, at least um, on average after, uh, you know, dealing with the stresses at Goldman Sachs. And Julie, there's been something about the report and how much conversation it has engendered that to me makes me question how like real this thing is. I mean, there, there's 13 respondents. So there's uh, if even if we assume that they all do indeed work at Goldman Sachs as junior analysts, it is a small slice of that group. But it's been amazing that we've now had several firms, including Goldman themselves, respond to what was revealed here with material actions. I, I found that and find that a little bit surprising, given that I'm still not really sure if this is uh, a genuine document, as it were. Well, it's interesting because this, I saw another headline today that a lot of tech workers are unhappy and their bosses have no idea. So maybe what it sort of evidences is just the level of fatigue with work from home. And especially if you're, okay, so maybe you're not working 105 hours. 80 hours is a lot, even if it's just 80 hours. And so when you have these Goldman itself saying it wants to preserve what it calls the Saturday, what the industry calls the Saturday rule, that you won't have to work on a Saturday, or when you have um, Jeffries coming out with uh, packages for people signing on that could include Peloton, or where you have City coming out today and saying that it's going to offer some measures to sort of protect its workers. I mean, I think part of that is a function of that work from home is difficult, you know, that this pandemic has been psychologically difficult for a lot of workers. And um, maybe they don't, you know, these firms don't want their workers to leave and go somewhere else that maybe is going to be a little bit less difficult. I don't know. I think I think it's just it's a reflection of where people's psyches are at this point, maybe. And I think it also brings to light the generational gap inside of Goldman Sachs, uh, inside of Wall Street, and if not, you know, through corporate America more broadly, you have a David Solomon who probably worked 120 hour work weeks, and look where he is now. He's making the big bucks, making the big shots, uh, and leading Goldman Sachs as CEO. Uh, and you have to look at this next generation, and will, when they eventually are in those leadership positions, uh, if they wanna work 80, work 80 hour work weeks, great, that's all fine and good, but are you gonna close the big deal? Are you going to make the big trade? Are you going to come up with the most amazing piece of research? Uh, unclear. You know, it's amazing what perhaps an extra 10 hours of working a week could do for you. So it's hard for me to feel sorry for any of those associates, especially when they pull in $150,000 a I'm going to push, back on, push, gonna push back, back on that. How I'm going to push back on that. because When you think about working like that, how many people who are working 80 hours a week are working 80 productive hours a week? Like you can get rid of some of that time and make your, your work more effective. Like I would push back against the idea that anyone really needs to work that much, but that's just me. Is, is 120 hours a lot? Sure, but 80 hours, how many hours are they actually working inside of 80 hours? Is it 60 hours? It's unclear, but you know, I do think uh, David Solomon got to the top of Goldman Sachs for a reason. It's not working 60 hour work weeks. I've never worked 80 hours and I don't really plan to. And if I ever find myself working that much in a job, I probably won't keep it. But that's me. And I don't want to be the next CEO of Goldman Sachs. And guess what? I won't.